On July 25, 2019, Todd White spoke at Kenneth Copeland's ministry and praised Copeland and Jesse Duplantis as men of God. Copeland and Duplantis are perhaps the most notorious and fraudulent prosperity preachers in the Western world. These are men of God. Kenneth, Brother Copeland, is one of the most hated people on the planet. He is. He's one of the kindest. And don't you ever say I did. Most generous. Money! most amazing men I've ever met in my whole life. And there's so many angry people out there. I'm talking angry. Jesse Duplantis? I met him at a book signing. Why do you need a $54 million private jet? We're not doing any kind of interviews right now. I'm in a book. I'd just like to know why you need a private jet. Keep your hands off me. You've given away a $20 million jet? So shut up. Jesse Duplantis? I love him with all my heart. These are men of God. I've had God come tell me, he said, this is what I'm going to do. I've had the Lord listen to him. What do you think about this? God has asked me for my opinion. God asks Jesse Duplantis for his opinion? Really? That, is that not shocking? Pray tell, Jesse, continue. Finish your thought. I said, well, Lord, since you ask, maybe I'm doing it. He said, no, we can talk frankly. What do you think? I said, well, I don't think you ought to do that. He said, why you don't think I ought to do that? I said, well, you know, I, I know you know people more than I do, but you know, Lord, if you just let me, let me do a little bit more work on this individual, I think we can get them to you. He says, okay, go ahead. Do what you have to do. And I tell you what, the Bible says, he who wins souls is wise. Yes, and he who thinks he can counsel God is a fool. God speaking. Who is this that darkens my counsel by words without knowledge? The fact that God has not struck these people dead is a testimony to how merciful our God is. God is in me. I, I never get rid of my... I do things like God. Amen. Holy Spirit said, you know, the father did that just like you did because you're part of that DNA. Well, God owns it all. No, he don't. No, he don't. Because if he did, you'd have no seed to sow. See, you have to understand who you are. Everything Jesus has, you have. Now, are you willing to exercise it? These are men of God. If you be willing and obedient, Isaiah 119, you shall eat the good of the land. So I am willing and I'm obedient to eat the good of the land, which makes church people mad. Why? I'm just being biblical. Why do you have such a nice plane? I'm being biblical. You've given away a $20 million jet? So shut up. Because that's what it costs brand new, and I didn't pay for it because I serve a Jewish God. I don't pay retail. Now you do what you got to do. There's two types of people you need to know, Jews and Italians. You got it. If you know Jews and Italians, you can make it in life. <laughs> Peace means what? Possession of adequate resource. That's in your ministry. That's in your personal life. I had the Lord one time, he said, I want you to sow this seed, but you're not gonna receive a harvest on it. I, whoa, 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 is this the devil talking to me? He said, no, this is me. This is for your grandchild. I'm setting her up and using you. And a good man make an inheritance for his children's children. So Meredith watches me. She calls me grandfather. She calls the other side grandpa. Calls me grandfather. And she'll come, she'll go, grandfather, how much money you got? And where is it? I want to see it. I said, well, why do you want that? She said, you said everything you have belongs to me and mom. And I said, that's correct. She said, well, I want to see it. I said, well, one day you will. Not only will you see it, you will handle it and touch it, but not today. But I expect you to keep expecting because by the time you do see it, it'll be bigger than what you see today. These are men of God. Center up on heavenly econ 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 economics. That's right. And how it works. And it works by certain laws. 
of prosperity. That's it. Let me say it again. Prayer is never a verbal activity. It's the self-expression of deity through the concentrated soul. Let me say it again. Prayer is never a verbal activity. It's the self-expression of deity through the concentrated soul. See, the New Testament idea of prayer is that it doesn't originate in man. Every prayer you ever prayed did not originate with you. It originated with God. Now, I want to say that. I said this uh, in one of the sessions, and I want to get on this. How many times you've walked by, and you might be shopping, and you see, uh, I don't know, a diamond ring. You like, I can see you like jewelry, right? You like jewelry. Nothing wrong with that. That's good stuff. God's got, the place is, heaven's full of jewelry. Okay. So watch this now. And you think, ooh, man, I like that. Now, the church world would say that's greed. The Bible warns us about the dangers of greed a lot. Jesse Duplantis is encouraging greed. You just want, no, no. God placed that desire in your heart. Amen. That did not originate with you. Yes. That originated with God because he created that stuff and you, his child, he wants you to have it. Don't shout me down when I'm preaching good. You're not going to understand that yet. I can see some of you going, huh? No, no. Oh, you walk by a car. See, because you've been told so much that that's greed. And you got to, no, no, that's God originating. A de delight thyself, therefore, in me, and I'll give you the desires of your heart. You see? So let's say you want to, you, you ever drive by somebody's house, and it just feels like it's your house? <laughs> now, you would never go up there and say, get out of my house. No, you wouldn't say that, because that would be wrong. But you just, you, go, you just, God, what well, Jerry said that the, the Cape Cod house, that's my house. Why? Because God put that in him. Do you see that? That originally, see, the reason why you thought it was your house, it is your house. But you see, you're, you're thinking, oh, Jesus, I can't afford that. He's not asking you to afford it. Where did you get that in your crazy mind? He didn't ask you to pay for it. He asked you to believe for it. See, but the church world has taught us to pay, 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 pal, pay, just pay. When you should believe, if you believe, you will pay. These are men of God. I'll let you check it in the Holy Spirit. You can believe you want, don't. He said, my name's Abraham, I'm your father. So sitting with Paul and Jan Crouch, Jesse says that the first person he saw was a thick, barrel-chested man he did not know and had to ask him his name. But then listen to Jesse as he relates this same part of the story to a different crowd at a different time. And as I was walking, I looked and I saw a man. He went, hey, Jesse. And I knew him immediately. He was thick barrel chested man. I said, you, you Abraham. He said, yes. He said, this is still my bosom. <laughs> this is still my bosom. That's so dumb. So, did he recognize Abraham or did he not? This is the kind of thing that happens when you make stuff up and then repeat it. You're bound to mess it up along the way. These are men of God. Now to the preacher who wants to reach the heavens. A Louisiana-based televangelist says God wants him to have a brand new $54 million private jet, and he's asking his followers to pay for it. It would be his fourth plane, but he says he needs the bigger jet so he can fly anywhere in the world with just one stop to refuel. Here's NBC's Tom Costello with the story. You know, I've owned three different jets in my life and I and used them and just burning them up for the Lord Jesus Christ. Televangelist Jesse Duplantis says God himself told him it's time for an upgrade. He said, I want you to believe me for a Falcon 7X. So I said, okay. A Falcon 7 jet like this one to preach to more people around the world. And he's asking his followers for the $54 million. I really believe that if Jesus was physically on the earth today, he wouldn't be riding a donkey. From his Louisiana headquarters, Duplantis is among a group of televangelists who preach that their wealth is God's will. This preys upon the poorest people that want and need money badly where they're told if they give money, God's going to bless them a hundredfold. Duplantis lives in a 35,000 square foot mansion, tax free. He's asking everybody who has less than he has to pay for this jet, and I, I don't get that, you know? Fellow televangelist yeah. Kenneth Copeland recently bought a $36 million Gulfstream 5 jet. Praise God. Isn't that good? The two have commiserated about how they can't fly or pray with commercial airline passengers. These are men of God. This dope-filled world, right. you get in, an air, get in a long tube with a bunch of demons. Right, that's exactly the And it, it's deadly. These are men of God. 
We asked Jesse Duplantis and his ministries for comment, but they declined to respond. Tom Costello, NBC News, Washington. And they're wealthy beyond imagination. One of my chandeliers costs more than most people's house. I got 22 chandeliers in the house. They live in huge mansions, drive fancy cars, and forget about flying coach. They own some of the best private jets money can buy. I got an intercontinental plane. Pastor Jesse Duplantis zips around in this DeSalt Falcon 50 jet paid for by his church. Here he is boarding the plane with his wife for a short one hour flight from Fort Worth, Texas to his home outside New Orleans. Estimated round trip cost $14,000. If he flew commercial, it would be as low as 180 bucks. My congregation is the world. I need to play. He says his jet allows him to better spread his message around the world. And it sure has taken him to some pretty nice places. 16 times to Hawaii alone since 2006. I really believe that if Jesus was physically on the earth today, he wouldn't be riding a donkey. DePlantis now wants an upgrade to this $54 million DeSalt 7X that comes with lavish interiors. Only the wealthiest people in the world can afford such luxury. So for you that don't think I should have that plane, God told me to have that plane. When he didn't respond to our request for an interview, I met him at a book signing. Why do you need a $54 million private jet? We're not doing any kind of interviews right now. I'm in a book. I just like to know why you need a private Keep your hands off me. Why are your people touching me like this? Because you need to wait. Let go of me. The next day, back on the pulpit, he joked about how his security got rid of me. She's gone. Boom. I can hear her hollering. <laughs> And I came back and said, what'd you do with her? He said, I made her outside edition. <laughs> For $54 million, I want you to imagine how many people could be fed. These are men of God. How many homeless could have places to sleep? Ole Anthony and Pete Evans investigate televangelists for the Trinity Foundation, a watchdog group. They're extremely greedy. They don't need mansions. They don't need jets. <laughs> but when it comes to luxurious travel... Are you seeing this? I hope so. You bought it. <laughs> very few people can beat Kenneth Copeland. He even has his own airport next to his lovely mansion in Newark, Texas. These are men of God. And the enemy is trying to raise up, just trying to anchor people into hate and anger. Me, I, I love people. I love Jesus with all my heart. There's so many people that are trying to wedge people against me. I'm not trying to, like, dispute it all. No, you have to let that stuff go. According to Todd, Kenneth Copeland and Jesse Duplantis are great men of God whom you must trust because he says so. If you question anything these men of God say or do, you are a hater working in conjunction with the enemy. Got it? Oh, you're in coots with Kenneth Copeland. I'll never talk to you again. What is wrong with people?